Hello, and welcome back to the HTT channel. In this week's video, we are going to explore ways to mitigate risks associated with earthquakes in the workplace by conducting a hazard hunt. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn all about one way to mitigate earthquake impacts to your organization. Welcome back, I am Kelly, and I will be leading you through this week's video. So what exactly is a hazard hunt? Well, a hazard hunt is a simple means of walking through a given space and identifying potential risks. In today's example, we will focus on a standard office space. However, these same efforts could carry over to a warehouse, a restaurant, bar, manufacturing plant, or even your own home. Before you begin a hazard hunt, you will want to ensure that you have something to document your findings and potential mitigation measures. A simple clipboard and pen can work wonders. Or perhaps you prefer to go a little higher tech and take pictures. In some cases, it is helpful to have a map of the floor plan to track the items of concern. It really doesn't matter how you track your findings, rather that you track them and then identify means to mitigate the risk. So what are we looking for exactly when we conduct a hazard hunt? When it comes to earthquake preparedness and safety, we are looking for things that could fall upon someone and potentially cause an injury, block an egress, and or destroy something valuable. As you walk through your organization, go room by room to look for heavy objects stored up high. One common heavy object in office spaces are potted plants and ceramic containers. This is very easy to identify and mitigate. You can either move the potted plant to ground level or place the plant in a lightweight plastic container. It is often commonplace in office spaces to have bookshelves, cabinets, credenzas, or other taller furniture that could topple over onto someone or block an exit. This is again easy to identify as anything six feet or taller should be secured to the wall. There are simple means to secure furniture to the wall and you can find inexpensive options at your local hardware or box store. Heavy pieces of office equipment, like standard office printers and copiers, are routinely placed next to doorways. These heavier and shorter pieces of equipment will not likely fall over. However, they are subject to shimmying sideways if an earthquake were to occur, and a heavy piece of office equipment shimmying over could block the doorway. Now imagine within that room, with the blocked door, there is a person who has suffered an injury from the earthquake. Valuable time would be wasted trying to gain access to the room and the injured party. Thus, you really need to secure any office equipment or furniture that could fall or block an exit, which would mitigate serious injury and allow for a quick response to personnel potentially suffering from minor injuries. You should also look for items stored in cabinets. In copy rooms and kitchens, the cabinets can hold very heavy items on upper shelves and once again create a potential hazard in the event of an earthquake, if the cabinets are unsecured. If you encounter this situation, you could move the heavy objects down to lower cabinetry or you could install locking devices so that the objects within the cabinets are unable to become flying projectiles. You may also want to keep an eye out for staff collectibles and trinkets. Some years back, I conducted a hazard hunt at a client's office and one of their colleagues collected M&M figurines. Although these weren't a hazard in and of themselves, if they were to fall off of the cabinets, they would have potentially created a tripping hazard, which could lead to injury. I also mentioned earlier that you want to protect those things of value to your company. This will likely differ from organization to organization. It could range from an essential piece of equipment for operations to treasured pieces of artwork or a hard earned trophy or award. Regardless of what it is, you likely want to ensure that it is preserved and are operational after an earthquake event. So lastly, you will want to ensure life safety measures are in place. Ensure that there are sufficient fire extinguishers proper emergency lighting, proper storage of solvents and chemicals, utility shutoff procedures, and evacuation plans in place that are known, drilled, and tested. In wrapping up, keep an eye out for anything you think could lead to an injury, block egress, or damage something of value to the organization. Good luck. 
Well, that wraps up this week's video. We hope you enjoyed learning about the essentials to conducting a hazard hunt and that you will give it a go in your workplace and home. If you enjoyed this week's video, please like, share, and subscribe to get notifications for future videos. We also welcome questions and comments, so leave us a note too. We'll get back to you.